Hello Shutterbuggers, I am Blunty and welcome to an eagerly anticipated episode of DigiDirect TV. Okie dokie gang, the time has come at last for me to give you the lowdown on this, the Panasonic GH4, the newest in the family line of the GH cameras. It doesn't actually replace the GH3, it's another level up. The GH3 is still going to be around, they say. But this, it's, it's party piece, it's special trick, of course, is it shoots 4K video, and it does so at a bang for buck kind of proposition that no one else out there can match. So let's quickly jump all over the hardware so we can get to actually showing you these stills, and more importantly, the video from this little beastie because let's face it even though it is you know a stills camera looking kind of thing the people who are buying this are not buying it for stills really they're buying it because it shoots 4k video and it shoots 1080p video at crazy high bit rates so everything is completely crispy and clean and amazing and balls to the walls gobsmacking slack jawed amazing the best possible value video shooter you can get apparently allegedly um, but yeah the hardware it looks very much like a GH3, and in fact, if it wasn't for the label there, at a glance, you'd be hard-pressed to tell them apart. And that's a good thing. The GH3 handles really well. So, we've got a nice, big, deep uh, hand grip here, and it's got a little contour for your thumb there, and your finger rests very naturally above the controls. Up the top there, we've got, you know, your, your white balance, your ISO, your exposure compensation. You've got a function button up there. You've got a locking mode dial with the power switch around it. You've got uh, your rapid-fire switch here, so you can go into rapid-fire shooting modes. Uh, another thumb dial around the back and another set of function buttons here and your um, autofocus, manual focus uh, kind of switch here so you can flick that with your thumb at uh, a whim and get you under the way. Another f uh, function button over there, flippy turny screen which we all love, really important when you're shooting video, particularly if you're like me and you tend to shoot yourself in the face a lot, you need a screen that turns around. Um, thumb wheel. Uh, SD card slot on the side of the camera, important for video shooters because if you've got this thing rigged up in a cage or on a tripod or whatnot, you know, on a shoulder rig mount, you don't want to have to take your camera off all that rig to get at your memory card thing, which on a lot of cameras is in the battery compartment on the bottom of the camera. Pain in the ass. If you're shooting video, video goes through memory a lot faster, you need to switch your cards more often. So, important to have. SD card slot on the side. But that is the basic quick tour of the hardware. I'm probably going to do a, a more detailed video going through all the bits and pieces of hardware, going through all the mentions and stuff. And if I do that, it'll be up on my personal channel, uh, which you guys will probably follow me there anyway. But here I wanted to give you just, you know, a basic glimpse over the hardware because I know you're more interested, aren't you, in how this thing performs out in the world when you slap a lens on it, start pointing at things and pressing that little red button on the back for video. Uh, and of course, the still shutter thing. So let's start with stills, get that out of the way, and then we'll move on to video. So, the Panasonic Lumix GH4, the new top of the line in Panasonic's ever stronger armory of Micro Four Third shooters, the first to shoot 4K video, and that is indeed its party piece, but it's got some sweet treats for stills shooters too, like a new sensor that can now focus in ridiculously low light. Now, I've not had a chance to test up against the other big names in low light shooting, but I get the impression from my time with the GH4 that it at least equals, in some cases probably betters, the big boy DSLRs in this aspect. That is truly impressive. You can also squeeze off 12 frames per second in full resolution stills, and that is faster than every other Micro Four Thirds camera on shelves right now. And alongside the new image sensor is a new quad-core image processor too, and this is the key to the ultra-high def 4K video and the rapid-fire continuous shooting. Beyond that, it's built for serious life too, weather-sealed, splash-proof, dust-proof, and a new shutter mechanism that is rated to up to 200,000 clickety-clacks. Make no mistake, this is a camera designed from the ground up for the needs of proper pro shooters. And it's not only capable of surprising feats of focus in low light, but under all conditions, it's very fast and very accurate in focusing. And as far as the aesthetics of the stills go, expect colour, tone and contrast right in line with the look and feel you've come to expect out of Panasonic's other family members. If you've ever shot with a GH3 or a G6, you'll be in familiar territory here. Except for the fact that the noise levels are even lower. This new sensor and the new processor's noise reduction offer up some very clean shots, even at high ISOs. And what noise there is, is very fine-grained and more film-like than the usual ugly digital noise. 
So, even with that 4K badge on the box, it's not a one-trick pony only good for high-res movie making. If stills are your priority over video, you're still going to have a real nice time with the GH4. All that said, now it is of course time to talk video. And again, even though 4K is the neon light feature here, this thing is a hell of a 1080p shooter as well. Autofocus in video is usually quite well behaved. It's responsive, it usually avoids hunting too much, and it locks in with confidence, even when asked to move from the extremes of the range. And again, just like in stills, it does remarkably well in low light, where many video autofocus and focus tracking systems start falling apart on you. And of course, it's got Panasonic's live focus peaking too, making working in manual focus mode and with vintage lenses an absolute breeze. Now, it's not quite as nice to use as Sony's or Olympus's focus peaking, but Olympus's doesn't work in video mode, like, at all. So we're still way in the wind column on this one. It's got all the essential stuff, like a microphone and a headphone port, of course. It's got clean HDMI output for external recording. And internally, you can suck in 1080p at up to 200 megabits per second. That's more than eight times the usual data rate on almost every other similar 1080p shooter out there right now. Crazy. And here's a real pro tip too. Because with 4K or even the 200 megabit per second 1080p video, you are flooding a massive and constant current of data onto your cards. You really, really need to make sure you've got the best. While testing the GH4, I had a couple of cards that would intermittently stop recording on me as they choked on the 4K data rate, despite theoretically being rated fast enough and being good brands that I trust, like the Sony for instance. The only cards I never had even a shadow of an issue with, and again this echoes my experience with the Blackmagic Cinema Camera's own high data rate ProRes footage, SanDisk Extreme Pro. Say it with me, SanDisk Extreme Pro. They are worth every last cent, trust me on this, they are the best. You can switch between a cinematic mode, regular PAL mode, or NTSC with a simple menu option, regardless of where in the world you buy the camera. So you've got access to frame rates of 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60. No compromises here. It's wonderful. And more than that, there's even a variable frame rate mode that will automatically conform various frame rates to 25 FPS. Everything from just two frames per second in real time, allowing you to get time lapse like sped up motion, or you can go completely the other way around and shoot in 1080p at anywhere right up to 96 frames per second, which will deliver you utterly smooth quarter speed playback for luscious and crispy slow mo. And as I said before, you can shoot in 1080p at up to 200 megabits per second, but there are also memory card friendly options of 100, 50, 28, 24, 20, and 17 megabits per second, allowing you to choose your own personal ideal balance of recording time per card versus compression quality. The GH4 is, as far as I'm concerned, the very best, most powerful, most flexible HD video shooter anywhere even close to this price. Now, some of you have already noticed that this particular video has been published in 1080p. A silly thing to do if I wanted to show a 4K video, right? Well, maybe, and I will have some proper 4K video uploaded in full res for you to peep at. But here, in this video, I wanted to highlight how 4K video can be awesome even for people and projects who only need 1080p. Because throwing 4K video into a 1080p editing timeline lets you squeeze more out of every shot. Firstly, it lets you either digitally push in or pull out of otherwise static shots, giving you more power over how the viewer's eye is drawn across your scene. You can think of it like making your sweet-ass prime lens into a zoom lens. That's cool. You can also just cut directly into a 100% pixel-for-pixel view, so you now have a wide and a mid, or perhaps even a close-up shot, from just one take. More powerful creativity and more interesting editing choices. Thirdly, pulling a 4K video down to 1080p can make things look very crispy. It can make footage just a bit soft so they look sharp. It can help bury noise in high ISO low light shots. And fourth, with all that extra resolution past 1080p, you can now use post-production software shake reduction tools without sacrificing image quality like you usually would have to. These are just the most obvious benefits of using 4K video to produce 1080p content. 
And once more, all this makes the GH4 the most powerful 1080 shooter around. But for those of you ready and willing to shift gear into a full-on 4K production workflow, there's a big pile of joy for you here too. The 4K stuff is crisp, clean and rich. The 4K doesn't do any weird interpolization. There's no pixel binning or line skipping or anything like that. The 4K video is 100% honest. Pixel for pixel, 4K right off the sensor. And I keep coming back to this point, but there's seriously nothing out there with this much power for this kind of price. Panasonic have just kicked the necks in of all their closest rivals. And just like the GH2 became a cult hit and a tool of passion and power for video shooters, thanks in part no doubt to the hacked firmware that unlocked high bit rates, but all that led Panasonic to recognize that we end users wanted that stuff, so now they're doing that stuff. Now, they've offered up this beast to us, taking on all they've learned from not only their own productions, but from what end users did with them, and what we say we want from them. They watched, they listened, they delivered. Oh, how they delivered. I foresee the GH4 becoming the next cult hit camera for video shooters, all the way from short form online content creators like yours truly, for instance, to full on independent movie makers and documentary shooters and all that kind of stuff. The GH4 is both cutting edge and wildly accessible. It's crazy powerful, yet blindingly easy to work with. It's, it's, well, it's, it's, beautiful. <laughs> In a word, it is beautiful. The one and only thing that stops the GH4 from being my dream camera, it doesn't have any in-body stabilization, so you'll be relying on optically stabilized lenses or external support equipment to kill the worst of the handheld shake. And that is one of the things I love most about Olympus's OMD line. I can use 50, 60 year old lenses and have in-body stabilization to smooth them all out. It's a wonderful thing. And that's just, well, that's just not here on the Panasonics. But that is it. That is the one and only thing I can really call any kind of flaw in this package of videographer smile times. And speaking personally, even without the in-body stabilization, if I had the cash right now, and the purchase was easier to justify against my shelf already full of various camera bodies, <laughs> I'd be pulling the trigger on a GH4 for myself right now. No question of it. It is brilliant. It is truly amazing value for money. Do I have to say anything more at this point? I mean, you've just seen and heard me go on and on and on about it. This is a brilliant machine. It is... Well, you know, like I said at the beginning, allegedly the best value for money you could possibly get if you're, a, uh, you know, shooting a lot of video, independent movie maker or documentary shooter and, you know, run and gun stuff or you want to need a little crash cam for your uh, production or whatever. This thing represents amazing value. No one else out there can match, you know, price for product uh, uh, and feature set. To, to, to this. This is this stands alone at the moment. This is sitting at the top of the mountain looking down upon all the other competitors going, what you got, biatch? Anyway, that is the Panasonic Lumix GH4. It is, like I keep saying, brilliant. If you've been waiting for this thing and hoping and praying that it was going to be good, it's good. It's good. Go out and put your money down now. I, I really doubt there will be very many people out there who need this in their life that will buy it and then go, oh, I've got buyer's remorse. It just won't happen because this thing delivers. It punches way above its weight. And uh, excellent value for money. But that is your lot for this week in DigiDirector TV. Join us each and every week for another episode. Sometimes reviews, sometimes commentary, sometimes guides. Uh, if you have something you want me to look at specifically in one of these episodes, drop me an email. And of course, please join us on our Google Plus community page to share your shots and chat with other people sharing their shots and get some feedback on what you're doing right and wrong and uh, get hints and tips from you know other people out there pointing their camera at things and having fun. But uh, I am out of here. Hey, did it completely smooth? No, it takes it all this week. I am in pro mode. Uh, if uh, you do subscribe to me on my regular personal channel, you may have seen the I Love Light, a little documentary I put together, uh, just shot, you know, conceived, shot, edited, fi filmed, published, all in 24 hours from a little uh, light painting style photo walk thingy I went on. If you go to my channel now, I think I should have time to get it up before this goes live, but uh, it should be linked in the description of this video 
if it is up, uh, I will be putting up a 4K version of that documentary. The one that went up was uh, 1080p because I edit my stuff on a MacBook Air and that was just the easiest way to get it up there because it uh, struggles with 4K in a big way. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've now had time to properly render out the 4K version because of course I did shoot it on this. Uh, it was the first thing I ever shot with this actually. I just dove straight in at the at the deep end as it were to see how this thing would cope because I'm familiar with the GH line. I thought, you know, I know how it controls. I know, you know, I'm not going to get stuck trying to find an option or anything. So I'm just, I'll dive straight in and just shoot a documentary with it in the dark, no less, on a brand new lens that I hadn't tested. That was the 15mm, uh, the one that I reviewed in, in the last episode. And uh, yeah, anyway, the 4K version of that documentary should be up now. Uh, and you should check it out because even if I do say so myself, it's good work. And uh, you can see how this thing goes in 4K in the dark. Uh, and if you're like me, you'll be suitably, imp suitably impressed. That was a lot of waffle for an uh, end of video stuff.